everyone. My name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. That's now 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or 1 a.m. I believe still if you're in the UK. I hope you guys and girls are well. I hope you all had a great Easter as well. Didn't need too much chocolate. <laughs> Good morning to Sniper Echo and Hellforge. I hope you're both doing really well. Uh, yeah, so uh, Daylight Savings has started in Australia. So we start at 10 a.m. here if you're watching me from, from the land down under, which is where I'm based. But I work on American time, so it's always 5 p.m. Pacific in the United States when I stream. So just to confuse you all. Um, remember guys, if you have any questions while I'm working, feel free to ask in Twitch chat. If you just want to say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Uh, remember too, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch channel, because I always upload all of my previous streams after I finish streaming. Uh, or you can also go to my YouTube channel, Bill Does 3D, and watch them there. But they're a bit behind on YouTube uh, because I have to keep them exclusive to Twitch for a certain period of time. So if you're watching me on YouTube, that's the reason. <laughs> Sniper says, yeah, I didn't have any, any Easter eggs. Oh, there weren't any for sale. There was a major, really? You couldn't buy Easter eggs at Easter in Ireland? Wow, that surprises me. Because, um, <clears throat> yeah, that really surprises me. You've got a big Catholic horde of people in Ireland, don't you? <laughs> So I, I, I think there are a lot of Catholics in Ireland. Um, <laughs> not saying you are, I'm just saying. It just surprises me. It's, you couldn't buy any Easter eggs. Man, that sucks. Any chocolate's good. It doesn't have to be in an in, in, in egg form. It can be, you know, chocolate bars. They're just as good. <laughs> Sniper says, any, <clears throat> pardon me. Any wonder I couldn't get PC parts? <laughs> what is going on in Ireland? You can't buy PC parts. You can't buy Easter eggs at Easter. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, just uh, Hellforge. If you want to join the Fildo 3D Discord server and become a Fildo, click that link Hellforge has just popped into Twitch chat. You can also at any time type exclamation Discord in the Twitch chat to get an invite link, or you can go to the About Me section on my Twitch channel. In the panels below, you'll see a blue graphic that says join the Fildo 3D Discord. You can get an invite link that way as well. Uh, we're going to be working on a game called The House in the Hollow. We're working on the kitchen for that game, which you can wishlist now on Steam by clicking the link. Hellforge has just popped into Twitch chat. Or going to the About Me page in my panels and you'll see a graphic that says wishlist the game on Steam. It'll take you to the Steam store page. Uh, we're working on the kitchen for that game. There's a, like a, an Art Nouveau building in that game. And we're doing the kitchen for that, for that building. And my website, I always forget about my website. If you want to know who I am, you can go to my website, which is fildoz3d with a .com on the end. Uh, you can look at some of my previous stuff, links to my social media, my Twitter, and art station, all that sort of jazz. Although I haven't updated my art station for a while, so <laughs> it's a little bit behind. Uh, Snyder says, I'll say this once, Phil, help me. <laughs> oh, Sniper, I'll give you a virtual hug. Give me a virtual hug. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> oh man. Mr. Square Pig, it's good to see you, Mr. Square Pig. Hope you're well. Hope you had a good Easter. <laughs> We're giving Sniper Echo virtual hugs because he can't buy PC parts and he couldn't buy Easter eggs at Easter in Ireland. Can you believe that? Wow. Wow. Um, okay, so yes, we're working on the House in the Hollow. Uh, <laughs> Oh no, that's right. <laughs> oh, don't cry, Sniper. Sounds terrible, I know. Can you believe it? It, it, it would be, I, I would just be out of my mind. Although you guys know I can't eat chocolate too much because I break out in pimples at my age still. So I had no Easter eggs as well, Sniper Echo. Okay? No chocolate Easter eggs for me for Phil either. So there you go. I mean, I could buy them, but I didn't eat them. I didn't buy them. Sounds terrible, it is. Poor Sniper Echo. Okay? Oh well. Things will get better, hopefully soon. Yes, hopefully soon. Man. Can you still buy not buy GPUs, guys? Anyone been trying to buy a GPU recently? Are they still in short supply? I think they are. Although I did hear a rumour that there was a big drop here in Australia of GPUs, because you no one can buy any GPUs here either. 
Um, but apparently in the last week or two, there was a large shipment of at least 3070s from NVIDIA and, and some of the, uh, I think the 6800s from uh, AMD. So I don't know, maybe things are improving. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you can upgrade that and buy, build that new PC soon, uh, Sniper Echo. <laughs> Mr. Squarepeg says, I've given up trying to get a GPU for now. I think that's probably wise. Because they're too expensive anyway. People are scalping prices. Manufacturers are even scalping their own prices now. You don't want to be spending that sort of money on a GPU. It's just, at the moment, they were always really expensive. And I, I, I've whinged about this before to you guys, that GPUs have gotten so expensive. But now, they've gotten outrageously expensive. And that's just because of the shortage. So, if you can hold off, hold off would be my advice, because it's not worth paying what you've got to pay at the moment for what you get. CPUs, on the other hand, they've got real cheap, <laughs> particularly Intel. Uh, sniper Echo. Oh. Uh, sniper says, I can't even get a CPU or motherboard. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't that terrible, Mr. Squarepeg? Uh, sniper says, no Easter eggs either. And a fridge will be a nine week wait. What is going on in Ireland? We can, we can at least buy fridges and washing machines and all that sort of jazz. That's never been a problem here. And we're all the way on the other side, right down the bottom. Islands right up there in near Europe. What's going on? Sort of, yeah, yeah, near Europe. <laughs> a nine week wait for a fridge. Well, that's out of age. What, what happens if your fridge breaks? What are you supposed to do? Because you're coming into summer now. It's not like you can just stick it out the back door, keep it cold. That is terrible. I've been actually lucky. My fridge, I think, has lasted me like I've had it for, God, ages. Must be more than 15 years now, I think. But I want a new one. <laughs> Just because I want one. But I'm not going to get one. Sniper says, be real with, with me, guys. Has Ireland been cut off from the world? I know. What is going on with Ireland? That's outrageous. Man. Uh, Sniper says, are you asking what I'm doing without a fridge now, Phil? Do you really want to know? <laughs> Maybe not. Well, I think it's nice and cold in Ireland, so in winter you wouldn't probably need one. But uh, summer's coming for you guys and winter's coming for me, which I'm looking forward to because I love the cold weather and I hate the hot weather. <laughs> Mr. Squarepeg says, I'm nervous about the riots in... Yeah, I heard about that. The riots in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Sniper Echo says it involves a bath. <laughs> oh, wow. So no baths for Sniper Echo because that's his new fridge. <laughs> that's an innovative solution, Sniper Echo. I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, I hope you. I hope you're well, sniper. I hadn't actually mentioned the riot, the, the riots that have been happening in Northern Ireland. I hope you're safe. Sniper says, "Indeed, same here." Yeah, I thought you guys had gotten over all of that sort of stuff. Well, you know, riots happen in every country, so they've happened, you know, everywhere. So <laughs> people aren't happy. <laughs> I guess that's that's what it boils down to. People aren't happy. Um, yeah, so they're not, they're not writing about religion, they're writing about being locked down or having to wear masks or other political problems in other countries of the world. It's, there's a lot of unhappy people around. Uh, Sniper says, hopefully it will be resolved soon. I hope so. I hope so. Because fighting amongst ourselves is never good. You know, regardless of what the reason is, it's not good. If you want to get angry at anyone, get angry at your politicians. <laughs> They're the people that deserve it, not each other. Okay, so we are going to now last before I before Easter we'd finished doing the oven and we'd finished doing the fridge. I haven't brought them into Unreal yet, but I have to do that. Um, there's only a few bits and pieces left for the kitchen, so we have to do the. There's like a bench that will sit in the middle of the kitchen floor. Um, then there's also a uh, pot rack which will sit from the ceiling above the bench. Uh, what else? The kitchen curtain, of course. And then the floor and then the walls. The floor will, is just basically going to be a, a rectangle or a square. So it won't be too difficult to texture up. And I already have the material uh, selected inside a substance painter for that. Uh, the walls, I have a, a, an idea of what I want. So that shouldn't be too bad either. Uh, the bench is already modeled. It's not my model. I'm full disclosure up front. The uh, bench was modeled by another 3D artist. Uh, I'm going to be retexturing it because I don't like the way it's been textured. <laughs> um, the pot rack is made. We have to texture it and UV map it. I've, I've made that. 
And the what was that? The curtain is done as well. It's it's, it's modelled a UV map. So. Hellboard, Hellboard says, are they writing about lobsters? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> uh, Reiko says, yep, you can keep your lobsters on a bath, on a bath back. <laughs> All right. So we have a choice between we can either do the uh, island bench, we can do the pot rack, or we can do the curtain. Sniper Reiko says, I'm a bath even. In a bath, you can keep lobsters in sort of bath, I guess, yeah. Although I wouldn't want to go near one of those things. Those uh, claws can be pretty dangerous. So yeah, we can either do the bench, the island bench, the pot rack, or the curtain. Let's do the island bench because, again, it's not my model. Um, it's already loaded here in Mac, so we might as well start with that one. Uh, so yeah, again, I did not model this. I did not texture this. This was another 3D artist. Um, so we're going to retexture it because I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, it's not terrible, but um, it's just too clean. You don't you don't make assets looking that clean. Come on. It's a kitchen. It gets used. Benches get scratched. Things get dirty. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's way too clean. Uh, he, it is a PBR material and I don't have PBR turned on, so that's why the silver here looks, the, the metal looks a bit flat, but um, it does look better than that once the PBR is fully engaged. Sniper says, I try to keep them lobsters at the bottom of the bath away from other produce milk. <laughs> I wouldn't put a lobster in your bath, really. I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, Phil wouldn't do it anyway because Phil can't eat seafood and Phil would get very sick and have to be rushed to hospital. So no point in keeping a lobster unless you want one as a pet, like Pinchy from uh, Homer's Pinchy from The Simpsons. And look at what happened to him in the end. Okay, so uh, Sniper says technically it's not a bath to me, Phil. It's a fridge. <laughs> what do you do when you want to have a bath though? Have a shower. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you're bathing. I hope that doesn't mean you're not bathing. That, that's that's even worse. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of ways we can go with this. We can. I also don't like the way this has been textured just here. If you, if you look at the wood grain, I mean, he's done as good a job as he can, but the the texturing doesn't really follow flow through to the edges like it does on the top. So basically what he's done is he's textured it from the bottom through the top that way, and then he's textured the end pieces separately. Well, he's UV mapped them, I should say. That's the correct term. Um, so we're going to see if we can't do an improvement to the UV mapping as well, I think. It's Android Lust! Hey buddy, it's good to see you. I hope you had a good Easter as well. Unlike Paul Sniper Echo, who couldn't even buy Easter eggs at Easter in Ireland of all places. Can you believe that? So there were no Easter eggs for Sniper Echo because there's none to buy. <laughs> Just like the PC parts. Or fridges. Now Sniper says, I use the broken fridges. <laughs> Okay, so you've got your broken fridge, so you can't use that. So you're using your bath as a fridge, and you're using your fridge as a bath. Well, that's an innovative solution if ever I've one. <laughs> I hope you at least took the lid off the fridge, because you don't want to be lying in the bath and have that thing closed on you. That would be that would be bad, being stuck in a fridge. Andrew Duff says, looks like Ireland is barred from the world. I know, we were just saying that. What is going on? Sniper said there's, Ireland, there's something going on where nothing's getting through to Ireland. It's terrible. Uh, I noticed you guys posted some new shots, some new stuff in the gallery. You guys know I love looking at the stuff you guys make. It's the whole reason I'm on Twitch. <laughs> it's to encourage you to do 3D and for you to show your stuff. So uh, I will show those at the end of the stream. If I forget, just to remind me someone. Because uh, Android, I'm not, and don't think if you post in Discord that I won't see your message because I have Discord open as well as uh, the Twitch chat. And I see that Android Lust has posted some new images. So has Sniper Girl. So has Chuatara. Um, Rob Shaw posted a gun, but I don't. Oh, yes, he did. That's his gun. That was nice. Uh, Wax Kink posted a gun as well. So we'll check those out at the end of the stream. Just before I sign off for the day, I like to show your stuff on the stream. 
If you guys don't want me to show you stuff though, then just tell me when you post the image in Discord and I won't. Uh, Sniper says, I wonder if that's actually the case. <laughs> Hellboy says, save and copy. Well, I won't save, but I will have a copy because I haven't done anything yet. Typical Phil, 15 minutes into the stream and he still hasn't done any work. Okay. So, I think what we're going to do here is we are going to retexture the model. The modeling itself is, is okay. Um, it's a very low poly model, which is fine. I mean, it's a game. I probably wouldn't have gone this low poly. If I put the uh, edged faces on, you can see just quite how low poly it is. Uh, it, which isn't bad, but um, yeah, I think if I'd been making it, I wouldn't have gone that low poly. And he has chamfered the edges, so that's good. One of my pet peeves, as you guys know, uh, is having a non-chamfered edge on something because it looks really unrealistic. But they, they're chamfered up, so that should be fine. Uh, he's, mo he's fake modeled in the texture the screw holes, which I don't really like, but um, I might just model those up as actual geometry, I think. I think that'll be a better way to go. So let's do that. Let's start there, shall we? Um, 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 um. How do I want to do this? I think what I'll do is we're going to start by removing the texture. Again, if anyone wants to see the texture map, this is the texture map that uh, has been created for it. And you can see what he's done here with the edges, which is not great. So we're just going to disconnect the texture map. Android Lust says, I actually have to have a work in progress. I may post to Discord. Oh, you know, no, no pressure. I love looking at your work though. You make some beautiful stuff and you do have one here that I want to show all that you posted just before Easter. So I'll do that because she looks great. If you guys don't want to wait for me, you jump on the Discord server and check out these images. But I will show them just before I sign off for the day. Uh, Snub says, cool. I just realized the tiny blender add-on. I uh, I posted has been used by over 600 people. Wow. What was the add-on you posted? Where did you post it? Detail. We want detail sniper, okay. What was the add-on for Blender? Again, you guys know that I use uh, 3D Studio Max, but Blender is another great 3D program and it's completely free and we love free. Uh, Andrew Doss says, how does the as that asset look in engine or rendered? I'm not sure if Max's viewport, no, it doesn't. No, no it, it doesn't. Max is, it's a PBR texture. Look, let's have a look at it correctly, shall we? Just because I don't want to, the, the guy that made it did a good job. It, it didn't, not like he did a bad job. Um, PBR metal rail. Let's hook up the color. Uh, and I've just got to find the others for it. I can't remember exactly where I put them now. UE4 models kitchen center bank. No, it's not there. Hmm. No, I, I don't. I can't quite remember where I put the. He he did create a um. But yeah, he, he did create a, uh, a roughness, a metal, and a normal. And it does look better when it's actually correctly shown with PBR, but I still don't like the... Uh, I still don't like the look of it. I mean, the metal it wasn't bad. The wooden top I didn't like. But the other thing I noticed with this too is if I throw an, un throw an unwrap on it, He's uh, unwrapped it in quite an unusual way. No, not unusual, but he, he's not stuck to the zero to one space. Now you can do this in Unreal. That's not a problem. Um, so basically what he's done is he's modeled one half of it. Like this is the underside of it. And the, for one texture tile. And then this one is basically the top part of it. So he's sort of broken up the UV mapping that way, which again, it's fine. And then he's just using a, he, 
he's just reusing the same texture so if I throw the texture well, there is no texture now but the texture just repeats basically um, and that's like I said that's fine unreal you can do this in unreal but it's generally not the way I work when I do game um, assets I usually stick to the zero to one space um, and you need to stick to zero to one when you do a shadow a, a light map UV when you when you're doing the light map UVs it needs to be zero to one it can't be like this uh, Unreal automatically would put those together when we imported the model uh, as a light map UV sometimes it gets it wrong I've noticed sometimes it can't do it at all it's a, it's, it's a bit fiddly uh, uh, temperamental the Unreal Engine's temperamental when it comes to generating light maps automatically it can do it 70% of the time it does it properly and okay um, sometimes it won't do it at all it'll just give you a blank UV space which means when you try and when you bake out the uh, the level you're not going to get you're going you're to get weird looking shadows happening on your geometry so I always generally tend to prefer to do the light map myself inside of uh, Max uh, as the map channel 2 and then when you import that into Unreal it will uh, it will use that instead of trying to generate its own so yeah I'm, I'm just I don't like doing that personally it's just a personal thing for me uh, so we're going to remap this as well re UV map it so I guess the first thing we should do is I want to add some little screw holes and they're going to be really basic they're just going to be a cylinder basically I just want some geometry here So where he put the screw hole uh, actually in the texture which again if you're making a game particularly a mobile game is the best thing to do uh, I don't actually want to do that I want the geometry I'm making a PC game uh, so I don't need to worry too much about um, making it super low poly making sure the size is correct I want to make it a little bit smaller. That's better. Um, I'm just going to chamfer up the edges of this a little bit. <laughs> Not quite that much. <sighs> oh, max, max, max. There we go. Just so we've got a bit of a soft edge on it. Oh, why are you doing that? Makes this chamfer tool sometimes can do really weird things. Maybe one day we will find all the things we left behind. The only reason we're alive is to one day be divine. When our thoughts have been aligned, our world can Why is it behaving like that? You can just go back to the original cylinder. It may be that um, we need to up the segments a little bit. In fact, I think what we need to do is we need to remove some segments. That's better. Uh, it may just be really naughty and just make it a little bit smoother. So we'll go to 24 for the roundness. There we go. Um, I'm not going to bother putting the cut line in like, you know, for a Phillips head screwdriver, you'd have that groove. I won't go that, or will I? Or will I? <laughs> um, Let me catch up with the chat here. Hellport says, anyone else having some issues with screen sharing on Discord? It keeps giving me the spinny circle of things. Uh, Andrew Lust says, it's worked for me yesterday. I know with Discord we're having some problems uh, last week. I think. 
Yeah, there, there were some issues going on with Discord last week that I read about. I don't know about now though. Health Watch says, today is the only time I've had this issue. I can't figure out why. I don't actually use um, screen sharing on Discord, so I'm not sure. Android Love says, uh, it's working for me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Uh, we're going to just, we, I, I'm going to go overboard and I'm going to put uh, a cut line in it. Because why not? It doesn't take very long. It's detail that's probably unnecessary. I don't think the player would ever, ever actually even see it, but hey. Why not? Uh, I'll be a bit deep, I'll bring it up a little bit. Alright, we're just going to use a boolean. There we go. Okay, let's just duplicate that a few times around the outer edge. So we want one there, and we want I'm holding down the shift key for a max user and dragging and that's making a copy just a shortcut key as a copy not an instance that in the middle um, and let's select both of these and then the top viewport again the shift key that they're facing the wrong way, so we want to mirror them. And move them back. Okay, now we should be good. Uh, let's attach all these pieces together. somewhere all right let's send it over to uh, Ryzen UV okay I think I might do this in pieces. Um, I don't want to do this. Let, let's do this one. Oh, wrong. There we go. And what I'm going to do is stitch these together. Um, so I'm going to start by... Where do I want the seam to be? Um, in fact, I'm just going to see if I can't get a pelt map out of this. Generally you wouldn't use a pelt map for something like this, you'd use this one, but we'll see what a pelt map gives us. We are getting some stretching, which you can tell by the colour, it's like that light red colour. Um, yeah, when, it, when we don't have the edges here are not straight, and I don't know that we can actually fix that. Um, we can try. So if we cut it there and we cut it there. And if we cut it there and there. Mm. 
And if we rotate it, we all can remember which button does what. So we are going to have some small seams here in the corner, but we're going to get a nice flow through from the top to the sides, which is what I want. So that when we put a wooden texture on it, <laughs> um, it all looks nice and even. Now he's modeled up the base as a separate piece, which is interesting. Uh, and fine, it's no problem. Because the player is never going to get down and look up there anyway to see that our UVs don't follow correctly through here. Uh, whereas they will notice through the sides. So. Okay, what else we got? Let's do these pieces. Bill hit the wrong button again. Uh, let's try this one. No, that one's not great. Let's try... Oh, let's try the pelt map again. Again, generally not for these sorts of assets, no. Went back one too far. I might try doing one at a time. My, the program might, might have it e an easier time. No. I think we might have to give the program a bit of a helping hand here. So we'll do a seam, we'll do a seam on the interior here, I think. And the same with uh, this one over here. do that every time. I got butterfingers this morning. There we go. Uh, Android Loss says, but Discord servers work differently around the world. Server close to you may be messed up for a minute. Yeah, well, that's true too. Very true, something I hadn't considered. Yes, you are correct. And I do know last week they were having some problems. I'm not sure if it was an attack, or like a DDoS attack or something going on with Discord last week. There was something going on. I do know that. We should be able to do these all as one piece. Uh, again, we'll do some manual slicing here. Let's go on the interior edge.
And let's just tidy these up a little bit. Uh, I'll probably get Max to do a repack anyway, but I just want to get the orientation correct. Hey, what else we got? <laughs> okay. okay. It's interesting to see the way some people decide to model. Now, this is one of the things I love about 3D. There are so many different ways to, to model anything. Uh, and, and the way that uh, this guy's decided to model up this bench by separating the top from the bottom is interesting. And he's probably done, and that's probably why he's UV mapped it the way, oh, yeah, why it's UV mapped the way it is. It's an interesting way to do it. Not generally the way I would do it. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a problem as far as modeling goes, but Sometimes when a mesh is not completely sealed, like the base here is open, uh, you can get light leakage happening inside of a game engine behind the polygons. So you got to be careful when you start making models that are, that are open like this. When you're doing a render, it's not an issue. Like if you're doing it in Blender or Mac or whatever, you use V-Ray or Corona or whatever it is, generally that's not a problem. But a game engine, you can sometimes get light leaking behind the polygons, and that can cause an issue. Andrew Dust says, actually, I think there was a DDoS attack last week. Yeah, I think there was. I'm pretty sure I read about a DDoS attack on Discord last week, so maybe they're still having some gremlins because of that. Andrew Dust says, uh, I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> Sniper says, discussing some of those methods could be an interesting topic for a chat stream. Well, yep, we have... Remember, the last stream of each month is uh, Just Chat, where we talk about whatever you guys want. And uh, yeah, we could we could talk about different modeling techniques and what's good about them and what's bad about them and all that sort of jazz. Uh, and again, this is not a bad way to model, but for a game project, it could cause issues. It's my only concern. Um, we'll bring it into the engine and see how we go. And if we have an issue, then we can bring it back into Max and we can seal it up. It's not, it's not a big problem, but yeah, he's, he, you see he's modeled the bottoms separate from the tops. And again, yeah, it's not something I would, I would, I would not model it like that, particularly for a game engine. I think Microsoft have a big announcement coming up soon regarding uh, DirectX 12, I believe. I think it's next week. Uh, they have one of their dev thingies going on. I think they're going to be talking about DirectX 12 and um, what are they calling it? It's the uh, it's a thing with using an NVMe drive to actually load stuff on the fly. Someone's screeching their tires around here. Maybe you heard that on stream. Um, yeah, so it's direct storage or something they're calling it. Direct drive, direct storage, something like that. So basically, it's what Unreal are probably going to end up doing with Unreal 5, the engine version, where they're going to load stuff in and out of the uh, game on the fly. So the, you know, the textures, the, the meshes, all that sort of jazz. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how Epic are doing it. Epic haven't really said, but I'd hazard a good guess that that's what they're doing. When they talk about unlimited polygons and unlimited draw calls, what they really mean is we're going to stream it in and out on the fly. Otherwise, it would be impossible. And so yeah, uh, that's all coming up. So that'll be available soon. 
when they when Microsoft released the uh, the new SDK for DirectX 12. I think it's what they're part of Ultimate DirectX 12 Ultimate they're calling it. That'll be cool. And mesh shaders, which is what I'm really excited for. Mesh shaders are really cool if you're into games development. Um, Andrew Lutz says to Sniper it would because there's ways that people model that make me think it's a bad technique but works perfectly fine. Look, you, there is no one way to do anything in 3D. <laughs> Again, that's one of the things I really love about doing 3D. There's so many different ways to do the same, to get to the same end result. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not suggesting what he's done here is wrong. It's not wrong. It's not how I would have done it. And it's not, it, if you're making game assets, it's something you really should be careful of. If you have an open edge, uh, open edge models. Um, I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying it could happen. It just really depends on the lighting that you've got going on. Um, so yeah, just something to bear in mind. Uh, Snover says, discussing some of those methods could be an interesting chart. I've read that. Uh, Snover says, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm sure all we have, we all have the little things like that that we could discuss. Well, that's true. Yeah, I, I, I'd be interested to hear how you guys tackle things as well. Mr. Squarepeg says, more than likely, yeah. Uh, Sniper says, yep, that's what UE5 does. I think they actually mentioned it with the PS5 tech demo. Oh, okay, I don't think I watched that tech demo. I only watched the initial release when they re when they did the announcement about the uh, game engine for UE5. As Mr. Squarepeg says, mesh shaders are awesome. They are awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on some mesh shaders. They are absolutely awesome. Uh, again, games development stuff, but... Um, who doesn't like games development? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, now we're not getting a flow through. We do have a seam here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to worry about that because these are going to be metal and with metal you don't notice things like that. The only time you'll notice the seam is if the thing has a pattern to it. Like wood, like fabric, that sort of stuff. Uh, aside from that, generally you're never going to notice uh, a seam on metal. So then he has this one at the bottom here again. And then we just have the screws, I think, that I added. So let's select them. Again, I'm, I'm going a little overboard here. I mean, actually modeling screws on something is probably not necessary for a game asset, but... But you never know, the player can crouch in the game, and if they do crouch in front of the bench, they'll see a nice modeled screw. <laughs> it's not very high poly, so it's not really that much of an issue to be honest. Uh, and that's the whole selling point of the game. It's the fact that it's so detailed. And that will be fine. So I don't think I've forgotten every anything. I think everything is UV mapped now. Let's send it back to Max. And let's repack the UVs. And again, I'm uh, not going to use the pack tool here. I'm going to use the pack tool from here. Um, it'll re I'll get it to rescale, I'll get it to fill. I don't want it to rotate though. And we'll just throw down a checker pattern to check that our texel density is looking correct. And then let's tile it 50 by 50. I'm going to turn off seam lines so they're not in the way. And I think we're good to go. So let's get rid of that checker.
Rename card. Hey, it's good to see you. Hope you had a good Easter. I hope you're well. I'm doing really well. I hope you are too, Rename card. I hope you had a good Easter. I hope you didn't eat too much chocolate if that was your thing. Poor Sniper Echo couldn't buy any chocolate at all. No Easter eggs. Well, I shouldn't say no chocolate, but no Easter eggs in an island of all places. Can you believe that? You couldn't buy an Easter egg in Ireland. Wow. And his fridge is broken and he can't get PC parts, so it's not going well for poor Sniper Echo. Um, okay, let's um, collapse the stack. And let's do some uh, vertex colouring. So we'll start with the top here, and I'm also going to have to select the bottom because he's made that a separate piece. And let's make that colour a red. And then let's go with the uh, brackets that sit underneath of the bench. And let's make them a yellow. And then we'll go with the poles. Or the legs, I guess is the right term, isn't it? For the uh, table. And we'll make them a green. And then we have these two pieces here, which will make uh, an aqua. Aqua blue. And then finally, we have the screws. Let's make them purple. Purpley pink. Uh, actually, I've just realized I've forgotten when I selected both of these, again, because he's modeled them as separate pieces. <sighs> I have to select those. And we'll just change the color on that. We'll make that a dark. Dark purple. There we go. Uh, rename card says, yeah, cheers. Hope you had a good one as well. I did. I did have a good Easter. It was good. Sniper Girl. Hey, it's good to see you. Hope you're well. <laughs> Poor Sniper Echo's crying. Sniper Girl says, just got off work. Oh, wow. You work late, don't you? I mean, I don't start streaming until five in the afternoon on, on you know, California side of the United States, so it must be quite late when you finish work. But it's good to see you. <laughs> Sniper Girl says 85. What's 85? Sniper Girl says those people wanted me to stay two more hours. 40. Oh man, 14 hours would be too freaking much. Oh, God. I don't. I, I, 12 hour days. Uh, I mean, I. I uh, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're terrible. Working 12 hour days is terrible. Particularly if you're on your feet, it's really bad. Like if you're sitting in a chair, then maybe not so bad. But if you're on your feet, man, that's terrible. You're doing well. That's good to hear. I uh, hope you had a good Easter, Sniper Girl. Uh, it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is when she works. Man, that is a long day. Sniper Rekker says 12 hours is enough, more than enough. I agree. I, I mean, eight hour days is what you, sh you know, is what, which is what is what I would strive for, particularly if you're on your feet. I mean, we don't have a choice sometimes in what we do, so. But I've done 12 hour days on my feet before, so I know what it's like. <laughs> it's not nice. Uh, I don't know if you're on your feet, Snowbag, but I'm just saying, you know, the people that work in retail, in shops and that sort of thing, when you have late night shopping, you're generally doing a 12 hour day on those days. Um, I know retail because you, I've mentioned to you guys, I've done so many things in my life, man. Um, I used to be a chef, uh, left being a chef, and then I went into, uh, I worked for the Museum of uh, Victoria, uh, for the Science and Technology Museum. I was a buyer and manager for one of their stores, their gift, gift stores. Uh, so I used to have to do 12 hour days on late night shopping sort of days. So I know it's like, it's terrible. Uh, then I went into web development, then into film and games and you know, archbiz. Uh, I've done it all. Variety is the spice of life, as they say. Uh, Android Lost says to Sniper Girl, the best thing to do is to clock out without anyone noticing. <laughs> You might be careful about doing that. Sniper Girl says, uh, we're still on station. Supervisor came by at like 6 p.m. Hey, can you stay two more hours? We're short on night shift. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's, 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 
That's outright. Um, look, I'm sorry, but you know, I think I think that's terrible. It, giving you an hour's notice before you're due to finish and asking you to work for two more hours, I think that stinks. I'm just going to turn on Vertex Colouring to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. No, I think we're good. I think I remembered it all. Yeah, that's terrible. Um, it's only gotten worse too. I mean, Phil's going to have a bitch now. Uh, the, the casualization of the workforce in, in all countries of the world is just a terrible, terrible thing. And, you know, what I mean by casualization is they don't offer you permanent full-time work. They get you on as a casual. They maybe only call you when they need you. Uh, or if they do call you, they only give you like three hours work. The gig economy is another big part of that, which is, again, a bad thing. Um, Twitch is a gig economy thing. Uh, YouTube is you know being a, a an uber driver all that sort of that's all part of the gig economy whereby you're only paid you're not employed by the company you're employed supposedly not employed by the company you you just use their app and they act as a middleman to get you work and so you have no sick leave you have no annual leave uh yeah it, it's, it's it's a bad way to work it really is now again some people you don't have the choice sometimes you just got to do what you can get money for but i it's just it's not good for society in general. This gig economy work and stuff is just terrible. And that's not what Sniper Girl is doing. I'm not, I shouldn't have segued like that, but yeah, just, we've got to be in my bonnet about the gig economy. I think it's not, not good for people. Uh, and giving that sort of short notice for an extra two hours work, I wouldn't be happy with that either. Uh, Sniper Girl says she is on her feet. Yeah, no, that's more than 12 hours on your feet is, even 12 hours on your feet is bad. You know, it's exhausting, it's tiring, it's, it's not good. Android Lost says, I used to do that all the time. Sniper Girl says, uh, love how Phil didn't notice that I... I oh, didn't... I'm oh, sorry, Sniper Girl. Thank you for the resub, Sniper Girl, you are awesome. My, my apologies for not noticing sooner. If, if I'd been paying more attention to OBS over here, I would have seen the... No did the notification go off? Did the little graphic pop up? Like it normally does? Thank you for the resub. You are awesome. I do appreciate it. Guys and girls, when you sub to the channel, thank you. And how long have you been sub for? 26 months, man. I've been streaming for so long. <laughs> uh, thank you again for the resub, Sniper Girl. Sniper Girl says, uh, that's what, I, what I'm currently. They offered to hire me on. I told them no. I'm full-time through a staffing company. If I was hired on, I wouldn't be able to take my leave of absence next month. Uh, I see. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's not... Yeah, and again, hiring companies, they're a separate beast all on themselves again. Um, it, it's quite common in... Um, like a friend of mine who's a software engineer. <laughs> well, that's not true. He used to work for a company where they hired him out. So you can get jobs based on what's available. Uh, he works for a specific company now, but he still gets hired out to other companies to get work done on projects that need to be done. So it's, yeah, but he, do, but he is employed full time for one company, even though he goes to different companies to do work, software engineering work. Um, and that wouldn't be good if he couldn't take that leave of absence, because I don't know how much you're looking forward to it, and I can see why with the sort of hours you work. Uh, Sniper Echo says, so what? So what I take from the rant by Phil is he clearly doesn't love ZBrush. <laughs> Don't get me started on ZBrush. That's a whole separate rant. <laughs> I'll never get anything done. All that interface in ZBrush. Um, Sniper Girl says, also, where am I working at? And where I'm working at, I wouldn't want to get hired on. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Let's hope they're not watching the stream. Um, well, fair enough. Uh, Sniper Echo says, I can't wait to check out the new user interface. What? 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 New, new, new user interface by ZBrush? Are they making a new... Are they going to update that horrible, god-awful interface of theirs? Sniper Echo says, nope, they, did, they didn't. They never will change it. Well, you know, they deserve to die. Die, die quickly and horribly. <laughs> the, the, the program, that is. It deserves to die off quickly. Quickly. It won't because there is no alternative to it, really. Uh, let's export selected. 
Actually, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to I'm going to save the file. We're going to open up the uh, kitchen we've already done because I want to import this to get the scale correct. So kitchen, kitchen. And now I'm going to merge the bench we just created. Uh, kitchen bench. Now you see, I did that so that we could scale it up. I knew it was going to be too small. So let's rotate it and scale it. And we want to scale it up to about the same height as the benches. I'm going to go into the side view here to look at this. Maybe just a little bit lower than the benches themselves. Generally with these island benches that sit in the middle of the kitchen, generally they're about the same height, but I'm going to make it a little bit lower. Or will I? Yeah, I might make it a touch lower. I think because uh, again I'm concerned that we're going we're going to run out of room in this kitchen uh, which is the whole reason I wasn't sure whether an island bench would be a good fit because we want the player to be able to move around um, and yeah I'm just getting worried that um, we're going to run out of room like the player won't have enough room to move around the bench I think we might be just okay because I can't really make the room bigger I have to work with the space I've got. So I'm just worried about the player getting getting around here. Uh, if worse comes to worse, we can either we can probably make the bench a little smaller. So or we can alter the collision around the bench so the player doesn't uh, get stuck. Um let me catch up with the chat here. Snapper Echo says, uh, Snapper, you, you had me all excited for a minute there, Snapper Echo, with that uh, ZBrush interface being changed. You lied to me. You got me all happy and now I'm all sad. <laughs> uh, Snapper Girl says, uh, I, it wouldn't matter. The people at my uh, staffing company know how I feel about it. Told them many times. <laughs> Told the company when they tried to hire me on. <laughs> they, they don't care. Uh, I get my job done and that's all that matters to them. Oh, fair enough. Uh, I also show up and haven't quit. They have people that literally quit after one day. Wow, it must be bad. And good on you for sticking it out. Andrew Lust says, did they uh, try to bribe you with benefits? Snapper Girl says, uh, yeah, extra pay, benefits and shit. I said, no. <laughs> good, good on you, stick to your guns. You don't want to work for a bad employer anyway. I mean, I know you are, but you don't want to do it forever. If they're bad. Um, Snappy Girl says, I'm a vet. I can go to the Veteran Affairs if I need to. I don't need to talk. Uh, I don't need them on their benefits. <laughs> Android Lust says, I like how one of the main benefits is free in other countries. Snappy Girl says, yeah, agree. Android Lust says, but companies want to maximize profits, so I see why they do gig type work. Oh look, it's great for the companies. It's great for Twitch. It's great for uh, Uber. I mean, those the, those companies are raking the money in because they get a percentage of every sale. Or you know, all the work you do. They, I'm assuming. I look, I know Twitch do, but I'm assuming Uber are the same. I haven't actually worked for them, so I don't know. But yeah, the, but the, these giga giga economy, giga working as working as part of the gig economy is is, is not good for the individual. Or for society in general. I'm, I'm sorry to say it's not. Because um, a lot of the times these companies don't even pay proper taxes. Like, well, they do it legally. They're not doing anything illegal. I'm not suggesting that. But they, they, they wrought it so they virtually pay nothing in taxes. And taxes is what pays for all everything that we use in society. Or, you know, you, me and everyone else. 
you know, it pays for, for your health care, it pays for your trans, trans, public transport. It, I'm, I'm not sure about the US because they're a bit different, but but I'm sure there are still things in the United States that taxpayers' money is, is, is used to fund. So it's not good for society. Um, Snappy Girl says, I, I love it more how politicians who receive health care from the government keeps on voting to increase their government benefits while at the same time saying how bad that type of health care is. The hypocrisy, tell me about it. We have the same issue in this country. You know, we, we do have free health care, but the, 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 the right, the conservative government in this country are always trying to get rid of it. Uh, it sucks because it's a good thing. Uh, not just that, many different areas where <laughs> the hypocrisy is rife. Like they don't want to pay benefits to people who are unemployed or people on a pension. They want to cut those benefits, but they're happy to get a pen, like to, to get a payment every month when they leave government as part of their deal. You know their package. I mean, they they get superannuation payouts that are huge. If you're a politician in this country, once you stop being a politi while you're a politician, and then when you stop being a politician, it just it sucks. It sucks. And I don't get why sometimes people don't get more angry about it because it's not good it's not fair it's just not fair uh, Andrew Lust says great for them not for us yep Snappy Girl says I love how <laughs> I love it how politicians you can't type yeah no, no I get the gist of what you're saying Andrew Lust says it seems like in general the working class pays more taxes than companies well <laughs> I know that Google don't pay a lot of tax in this country that's for sure or Facebook or Amazon, I don't think. Um, so yeah, the bigger the, com the com company, then the uh, they're not doing anything illegal. I'm not, you know, they're, they're they're working within the law, but they're not paying any tax. It's because they all show all of their headquarters. They they you know they get away they get away, away with not paying any tax, and they make billions of dollars in profit. You know, when we're talking millions, we're talking billions. Virtually tax free. So, another girl says uh, it's brainwashing and old people. I agree, it's old people. Um, they feel like it's better to be able to choose their plan. What they're finding out is healthcare tied to a job. What happens when that job goes away during a pandemic? They're screwed. Uh, yep, pretty much. Now that's that's the system you guys have in the US. So in Australia, we do have public health care. We call it Medicare. Um, so it's free. I mean, you know, you may have to wait for if you need surgery and stuff, if it's not critical, like you're not going to die tomorrow. Um, you may have to wait a little while to get the surgery, but it's free. You don't need private health cover. The government, you can get free health care. Um, you can take private health cover as well if you want in this country. They don't stop you from doing that, but you don't need it. Uh, so that's a little bit different in Australia, but they're always, the, the conservative government in this country are always trying to, to kill it, to, to kill public health care. They want everybody on private health care. They're just a bunch of A, A, H. You know what I mean. Most of the politicians. In most countries. Uh, I think we might just be okay. I think, um, I think there might just be enough room to actually move around the uh, bench here. Uh, when we bring it into the engine, we'll find out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now that I've scaled it is I'm going to reset the X form, otherwise the scaling won't stick. And collapse the stack. Okay, now we can export the bench. Let's send it to model kitchen. Uh, send a bench, I guess. We'll put it in the same folder. And I, sp <laughs> I can't spell. I forgot. Instead of putting a H on the end of that, I put a G. Well done, Philip. Uh, we'll call it kitchen bench. Uh, 
It's going to call it sized so I know that it's been scaled. And we're going to jump into Substance Painter, create a new project, load up her bench. Kitchen, 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 kitchen. There it is. God, it took me forever. Uh, we'll do it at 2K. The engine will knock it back to 1K anyway. Let's bake out the maps using the low poly as the high poly. 2K with the ID map set to vertex color. Android Lust says, like what happened to a lot of people here. Android Lust says, look at Bill boasting about his free health care. <laughs> I'm glad I've got it, let me tell you that. I don't have private health care cover. So. And health healthcare is not part of employment in this country. So <laughs> you don't get health cover from your employer. If you want private health cover, you have to pay for it separately. Because we have this public health cover. <laughs> All right, let's have a look here. What do we got here? Let's start with the top of the bench. Uh, we'll move down to the bottom. I'm, I'm not using a smart material at this stage. I'm going to do this uh, old school. We could use a smart material. I probably have a few that I've created that uh, might be okay, but we'll see what else we got. Because sometimes it's just nice to, to do things from the beginning instead of having something pre-made for you. Well, even though I pre-made it, it's one of my own smart materials are. I still like to do it from scratch sometimes. It's actually nice to be working on things like this because you guys, I, 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 no, I've been working on things like the crypt for the game. Um, yeah, the, the, there are these whole sections that use a lot of this ornate stonework. Uh, so it's actually nice to actually be working on something a little bit, a little bit different from columns and statues and you know all that sort of jazz. Let's start with um, something like this wood here. Uh, I'm going to mask with color selection to the top. We're going to rotate it. Now, this is just an underlying layer, by the way. We're going to put something on the top of this. Let's start with scaling. Um, 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 um. I'm going to turn off the hide information for this one. This is again an underlying wood grain. And I think I might run the wood. We might rotate it 90 degrees, see if it looks better. Yeah, I think that's better. So that's good as an underlying wood material. Let's see what else we've got. Surprisingly, I don't have a lot of wood materials, you know. Heaps of fabric, heaps of uh, marble and cement and tiles, but not a lot of wood. That's okay. We can reuse the same. Um, if, if we need to, we can reuse this wood material. I'll change the color. I think I can change the color. Yeah, I can. I was just hoping that I might have had something that was a little bit more interesting. Something with a bit of a pattern, not something in it. Let's make these large, that'll be easier to see.
I like this. This is for a floor. Just gonna see if we can use it for a table. I don't think we can. I don't think even if I try to. I'm just gonna change the mixing on this. See if we can't use it by changing the mix. No, not really. That's unfortunate. What else have we got? Four AM putting on my shoes, gotta get outside, gotta leave this room. There's just too many things that remind me of you. We don't have to even make it wood, we can make it tiled actually if we wanted to. I wonder what that would look like. But they don't seem to work tonight. We can make it marble. We have wooden kitchen. We've got marble bench tops with with the wooden cabinets. Tile might look interesting. Just don't know if I've got a tile here that I particularly like. No, I don't like that. I'll look for wood and tiles as we go through. See if I can find something I might like. No. That's gross. Could actually be, be uh, metal as well if we really wanted it to be. We could make it all metal. No, the bottom will be metal. Let's make the top a little bit different. Curious what this one is. This is one that I created by the look of it. I see. Okay. No, I think I created that for a book. I mean, as far as the material goes, it's not too bad, but I don't really like the yellow in it. Hmm, I don't think we can change that. Again, I'm just going to mask the color selection so I'm not getting distracted by it being put everywhere all over the model. We'll leave it there, we'll see if we maybe you can use it as a mix or something.
Hmm. I may have to create some more wood materials for my collection, I think. Just so I've got them in future. I'm just going to turn these layers up underneath of it so we're not getting distracted by what's going on. Uh, uh, what I'm doing, trying to do here is, well, I'm looking for an interesting wood pattern. As opposed to just having straight wood, you know, panels, planks. I, I, I want something with more of an interesting pattern in the wood. Either that or we'll go with a marble. Again, I'm just going to leave that there, turn it off, get rid of this blank layer at the bottom. Let's keep going, see if there's anything else here. <laughs> we can make a turquoise. You'd like that help, Lodge. Is it turquoise? No, what's what's the thing you want me to make everything? Keep forgetting. <laughs> uh, Andrew Glass says, that looked better than plain straight. Yeah, I agree. Look, the plain straight is very boring. Um, something with a bit more of a pattern to it is more interesting. Uh, but we'll just keep going and see if there's anything else here that might be good, because we could always go to a marble, because the uh, other bench tops are marble. So. Like, we don't have to go to the same marble we use for them. We could go with, um, like, a black marble or something. Actually, I think we used quite a dark marble on the bench top, so we could go with, like, a white marble, uh, which would look okay. Yeah, because all of the other woods are really quite plain. So I'm just going to look, uh, throw a marble on it and see what it looks like. Uh, we, again, like I said, we could go with like a tile if we wanted to, but we'll uh, look for a marble. See if we like the look of the marble more than the wood. Just finding the right color marble. I quite like those sort of like the red in this. It's interesting. And again, I'm going to mask with color selection just so we're not getting distracted by it being applied everywhere else. Do a duplicate on this. Let's make some changes to the duplicate. I might darken it up a little bit there. Pull back on the saturation. Change the roughness.
Maxo Friendo, hey, it's good to see you. I hope you're well, Maxo Friendo. Hope you had a good Easter. We're just playing around with this, trying to get something we like for the top of our table. Uh, I don't know that we'll put cracks in it. Well, maybe, maybe some cracks might look cool. I don't know. Maybe just a few light cracks here and there. Uh, I'm just doing a comparison difference between these two here. Because I'm going to do a, a mix in a minute. So we've got a version that's a little darker. With a bit of a change in the pattern a little bit. Let's get a smart mask. And let's go with... Uh, Let's try stains and scratches. Let's see what that gets us. Don't know stains and scratches is really going to work for us. No, let's try something else. Uh, let's have a look at... Let's look at Dirty. Yeah, no, again, these, these I don't like these dirt textures. Dirt helpers. Um, they tend to make things look too speckled. Well, we can knock that back by going with a blur, but I still don't think I like it. No, let's see what else we got. Have a look at this sand dust one. one's not really what I want either. Let's go with our Surface Worn, our tried and true. We use it all the time. Android Lust says, uh, the table's going in the middle of the kitchen. Yes, it is. Going in the middle of the kitchen like that. And we do have marble here on the top, on the top of the benches for the rest of the kitchen. So that's the reason I'm thinking of marble. Um, we could go, like, originally I was thinking of wood, though. I just thought I wanted to see what my marble would look like. And I'm probably spending more time on it if I don't decide to use it, but uh, we'll just do a bit of a fade between these two. I still have the wood grain on there uh, underneath, so we can switch between them and see which we like. I'm just going to group both of these together and mask with color selection to the red um, 
You like the marble, Sniper Girl says. Uh, Andrew Glass says, yeah, marble might work better than wood for the island. Yeah, I, I think, again, the bench tops here, they're like a black marble. Here and here. The lower benches. The top of them. So, I mean, originally I thought wood, just as I had to have a bit of a contrast from the marble. But... I think a marble could look interesting, provided we don't make it the same marble. We could, like... Usually, you would make it the same marble as the bench tops here. So whatever that marble is, you'd make this the same marble. Because that's generally when people put to, when they put their kitchen together, they want everything to blend. So normally, you would use the same marble. You don't have to, though. And it can sometimes look interesting if the marble's a little different. Uh, and again, the marble that we're using for the kitchen benches is, is like a dark marble. I think from memory it's a dark marble. <laughs> we'll find out when we bring it into Unreal. Um, so that's why I'm thinking maybe a marble here would look interesting as well. Like, do I, did I make it a smart material? I may have made it a smart material. Let's have a look. Um, let's do a filter by my. We'll see if the kitchen benches are here. Because I did, uh, I may have created a smart material for the kitchen benches. My kitchen countertops, is that the one? Yeah. All right, let, well, let's have a look at what the actual original countertop material is like. Uh, we are going to have to make sure that if we're doing any color selection, it's picked to the right color. So this is basically the color we've made the uh, the actual bench tops themselves. So again, they're dirty, remember, because the kitchen's quite old. It's been locked up for a while. So that's the bench color. Uh, and we're putting this color with it. So this, this is the central island thing. And then the actual countertops themselves are that color. We could make this central bench that same color, though. Well, we could even be a little bit more interesting and we could do a blend between them. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go with... Um, let's try... Um, let's try this dust white edges one. Yeah, no, so this one's not going to work for what we want. So let's just undo that. Uh, let's try uh, surface worn, tried and true. It's good to see you, buddy. I hope you had a good Easter as well. Didn't eat too much chocolate. 
Uh, Legmog says, what kind of toilet is this, Bill? Nobody can sit and relieve themselves on this thing. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're done with the toilet. You got your gold toilet. We're doing the centre bench for the kitchen now. <laughs> Should we make it gold? Should we make it a gold centre bench? <laughs> Hello to you too. I hope you're well, Legmog. <laughs> and I hope you had a good Easter. So we're just trying to work out what whether we want the top of this to be wood or marble, basically. And what colour marble if we want it to be marble. is not really doing it for me. I want to choose a different mask. Legmark says I'm well. You are now talking to the proud owner of two functioning 3090s and a 1080 Ti. I finally have a whole new PC built where I can utilize all these cards. Well, well done. Wow. Two 3090s. Don't tell too many people that. There are people who can't even buy one. <laughs> well, that's good. So you, you're in has it sped up your workflow? Are you enjoying having two 3090s? All that VRAM. Sniper Girl says, I'd officially hate you. <laughs> also, congrats. Yes, you're going to get a lot of hate from people because they can't even buy one. Uh, let's try staying some scratches. says it has i'm rendering a project right now with two pcs and goodness gracious this room temperature is very cozy right now i noticed that too with my 3090 when the thing is um is working going when it's like not not when i'm at windows here or anything but when it's being used it gets really warm that thing throws out a lot of heat <laughs> i mean it's, it's been faultless but man it does get warm uh, I can feel it because if I touch the top of my case, my case is really warm. But I do love it. It is a, is a, it's a very good, a very nice graphics card, 3090. And all that VRAM! says hey Legmog, Legmog says hey. <laughs> so yeah, because you're, you're doing um, GPU rendering now, aren't you Legmog? So it will really help with that. So it's, it's a beast of a card, the 3090, really a beast. It certainly does GPU rendering really nicely. brought in the original marble just to add a bit of dirt so that the thing doesn't look quite so clean. Um, I might just pull the mix back a little bit. Just so we have some scratches and some wear and tear on the marble. Marble's actually very hard to actually scratch, you know particularly once it's been treated, but that's okay. We want it to be, we want it to look interesting, not be uh, completely accurate. My phone's going off, my apologies guys. 
always happens when I stream. Why is that? They wait till I start streaming, I'm sure. says it's so nice renders that would have taken 15 to 16 hours are now done in five <laughs> yeah gpu rendering is pretty pretty cool i think what i might do here is um i've got that dark up overlay and we have this one here which is a mixture of the two marbles I might just change the color a little bit on one of these. I can't actually change the color itself, unfortunately. I'm just going to play around with the color variation a little bit. See if we can't come up with something that looks a little bit more interesting. I um, you guys watched anything interesting on Netflix? I watched the uh, the Dota animated series that Netflix have just released. It was pretty good. Dota Dragon something or other. Can't remember the exact title. But based on Dota, the video game. Uh, Legmark says, man, i got to take my hat off to Phil. He's making an entire game right now. The length he will go to for a glorified bird animation show. <laughs> That's right. Not just me making the game. I'm doing it with the game studio, so there are other people involved. Uh, just for a bird animated show, really. Yeah, well, there are no animated birds in the game. So, <laughs> I learned my lesson. Uh, Android Lost says, Data animated, yeah. Uh, Android Lost says, had no clue they made a series, although I never played the game. Look, I've never played the game either. Uh, I've watched a couple of Let's Plays of people playing Data. Um, but they've made a, an animated series on it now. It's on Netflix. Then it was pretty good. There's only, I think, only eight. The first season has just been released and there's only eight episodes. And they don't go very long. They go about a half an hour each episode. Uh, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I mean, it's it's if you like Castlevania, that animated series on Netflix, you'll like Dota because they're very similar. And I like Castlevania, so... So yeah, if you're bored one day and you want to watch, and you've got Netflix and you want to watch something, then uh, I can recommend Dota. It was pretty good. give you a lot of options here as far as colors go you can in increase the intensity of a color but you can't really alter it too much i want to bring in a bit more yellow into the white areas to make it look a bit older not too much though
Uh, like Mark says, yeah, the other people involved were all other artists who were so deeply moved by Phil's bird animation, they just had to be involved with making a game environment book. <laughs> you're so cruel, Legmog, you're cruel. My eagle was wonderful. <laughs> Android Lost says that bird was probably the last thing Phil <laughs> animated. It was. It was. It was the last thing I animated. I haven't done animation since then because Legmog's being so cruel. <laughs> oh, you leave my eagle alone. You, you know I stopped that eagle. It's in the actual. It's in the. It's in Barrett's study now in the game. So he's dead. He's dead. He's been stuffed in and put on display in Mr. Barrett's study. So. <laughs> the eagle is no more. The eagle will be flying nowhere anymore. Hey Mark says, cheer Android, I mean after you, you animate perfection, where can you go from there? That's exactly right. <laughs> Android Lust says, you stuffed him. I did. He's been stuffed. That eagle is no longer alive, I'm afraid. He's been stuffed and he's in Mr. Barrett's study. So, all you people that uh, play the game can can check out the stuffed eagle who is no, no longer alive. There'll be no more flying for that eagle ever again. I might just pull back a little bit more on this uh, overlaying dirt layer. Uh, let's look at this bit here. How are we going for time? Uh, let's go back to our smart materials for this one. And we're going to find an underlying metal. I may change the top of that table up. We'll do the, the metal and we'll come back to it. Let's try this one. Uh, again, let's mask with color selection to that. Um, I don't actually like that so much. We'll turn that off, see if we can't find another metal that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, I can't say I love that one either, but I like it more than the other one, so let's delete the old one. Let's have a look at this one. No, I don't particularly like that one. Let's have a look at this one. Pay no attention to the top. We're really only looking at these two shells here through the middle. I'll leave it there to see if I can't find anything else. What about the bare metal? Not really. This one. No, I don't like that one. What else we got? Uh, let's have a look at let's look at this one. No, I don't want it that rusted. Let's look at this one. No, I don't like that one either. Uh. I spoiled for choice with metal. I've got so many.
I'm looking at this one. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm looking for an underlying metal here anyway, so I don't want to get too carried away. It's not too bad. So what we can do is we can start to mix them together. So let's um, put these three in their own group. I really should be naming these. Um, metal shelves. And... Let's mask with color selection to that. And let's do a smart mask. And we'll start by mixing in the underlying layers here. So the shiny to the dull. Uh, let's go with, um, let's try surface rust. No, let's try stains and scratches. Let's turn it off. Just got to find the right layer here. In fact, I don't like that. We're going to go back to Surface One, I think. And surface One is not doing what I want it to do. Okay. Let's um, find the right layer. I'm going to turn off the hide information. And we'll bring more of the silver, take out some of the dull, pull back on the contrast. Let's bring in the layer above it which is more of the silver and let's go with uh, let's try dirt soft edges make sure I'm in the right layer now hang on before I do that let me organize myself here so metal shelves this one here okay No, that one's not going to work for me. Let's try a different one. Let's see. Um, Abigail says, well, did, you did the eagle a favor in putting it out of its misery, especially after you got done with it. You, you people are so cruel. So cruel. I never pretended to be an animator. I never said I was one. I never said I was even good at it. <laughs> I 
So cruel. So cruel. Yeah, that, that should be okay. I just wanted a little bit of variation in the metal. So it wasn't quite so shiny and new and looked like it had been used and we've got some damage happening so that's fine. Uh, Sniper Girl says, took you long enough to see that. I know, I got so engrossed in what I was doing. Let's do a save because I haven't actually saved this project yet. So I guess we should do that just in case something crashes because you never know. Okay, we're going to call it Center Bench. Uh, we may pick this up tomorrow because I want to show the work that you guys and girls posted in the gallery on the Discord server. So we will uh, pick this up tomorrow and finish this um, bench or we'll decide what we want to do at the top then. I don't like the color of that so much. But we'll look at that tomorrow. So we did a save. Uh, let's have a look at the stuff you guys posted in the gallery. So we'll start with Android Lust image here. Of another beautiful character. Oh, wrong one. Uh, he created. And that's my website, by the way. If you want to go and see what I'm all about, go to fieldus3d.com. Let me just zoom out here. Very nice. Beautiful work. I love it. I always love your work. You do such nice characters. And and the silhouette and the scene that you put together is always really interesting and lovely as well. Beautiful. She looks great. He looks great as well. Yeah, really nice attention to detail. Lovely silhouettes, lovely texturing, uh, great modeling and as well. I love it. Love it, Android Lust. Really nice. Uh, I like the composition too. I like the fact that you've gone with a really plain background here. It really helps to make the characters pop as opposed to putting like a a detailed background in the scene. I think this looks really cool. I really like it. Save, sip, stretch. Good suggestion. So we've done the save. Let's have the sip. And we can do the stretch. Oh, oh. Oh, did you hear my bones crack then? <laughs> Yeah, it looks beautiful. And like I said, I like the composition and I like the fact that you you put in a plain background because I think it really helps the character to pop. It does. It looks great, doesn't it? He does beautiful work. You should look through the gallery if you're not familiar with uh, Android Lost's work. He's done really beautiful character work and so many different characters. Um, yeah, I think my favorite is still, um, is still uh, Thelma, is it? that you did, that, that Thelma character from Scooby-Doo. She was really, really, really unique looking, really interesting. But all of his work's beautiful. Android Lost says, oops, that's actually an old version, but nothing huge has changed on the newer one, so it's fine. Yeah, I love it. It looks beautiful. Um, Sniper Girl has been working on a scene as well. Um, we'll have a look at that. Now she's um, still creating it. This is like a garage, I believe, area, tool shed bit. It's coming together nicely. Uh, she's posted some other images, which I'll show in a minute. Oh, she's been talking about doing a wood grain. Yep. So, you know, it's coming to get a lovely sniper girl. Some nice detail going on here with the wood as well. Uh, Chuatara is working on a character. The Chiritara, what's he working on here? It's an outdoor tool area. Okay, cool. I should have known from all the tool chests here. Don't show. Don't show what? 
don't post the other images going to okay all right fine okay so she's working on this area there are other images she's posted of other areas around the garage though so you guys should check that out um tuatara is doing a character likeness oh what's this guy's name tom hiddleston i mean i recognize him but i didn't know his name and it's coming together really nicely as well as far as the likeness goes here looking good to Atara Thor that's what I reckon I'm trying to th I was trying to think what I've seen him in and it was Thor yeah he was going out with um, Taylor Swift for a while you can believe that uh, Rob has posted it's all great stuff as Renan Card says. Yes, it is. Loki, that's it. Loki. Loki from Thor. An ex boyfriend of uh, Taylor Swift. Um, Rob has made a gun, I believe. Have a look. Oh, so, this is a gun that Rob, Rob has been working on. And again, lovely. Lovely detail going on here, too. Um, I even like the detail actually in the uh, in the character's arm, the cloth detail. Yeah, it looks really cool. Oh, and again, I love the, the detailing he's got going on here with the uh, with the strap, and the distressing here on the um, metal. Looks really cool. Uh, Rob has actually posted a link to his art station, so you should check out his art station as well. Uh, Wax Kink is also working on a gun. You guys love guns. Um, and again, I've had to zoom it right in here, so don't judge it on my zoomed up image. A beautiful, beautiful detailing. I really like the look of the gun. The gun's in, an interesting design. It's a Sten MK2 gun, whatever that means. You guys know I know nothing about guns. Um, and again, Wax Kink has actually posted a link to his art station, so you guys check that out on Art Station. And Snappy Girl does not want me to show the other pictures, so I won't. Uh, but you guys have done great work, so great looking gun. I love the design, the texturing is really nice. Uh, what happened here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I love Rob's gun as well. Uh, yep, the character here is looking coming together really nicely. Of course, Snappy Girl's tool area and Android Lust Singer on piano. They all look great. Uh, thank you guys for letting me show them on stream. I think we might leave it there though for today, guys and girls. Um, I will be back, of course, tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. Uh, I do want to thank you guys though, for hanging out with me and for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank Sniper Girl for the resubscription of 26 months. You are awesome. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off today, tomorrow, working on the kitchen for the house in the hollow. You guys take care and hopefully I will see you all again tomorrow. See you guys.